Hey guys, what's up? There seems to be a lot of people who think that there are barely any female protagonists in JRPGs. Oh boy, how wrong they are. Today I'll show you 50 JRPGs with a female protagonist. And I'm not talking about those games where you can customize your character and choose a gender. No sir, all of these games have only one. ONE protagonist and that's a girl. Alright, I'm gonna go real quick on some of these games because we have 50 games to cover. Yeah, let's begin! Number 50, Valkyrie Profile I wanted to start with one of the most obvious as it is also one of my favorites and since it's pretty much number 50 it's also obvious this list will be in random order. This was released on PS1 and later on PSP. You play as Leneth the Valkyrie, also known as Platina, working for Odin and Freya. Her task is to recruit and train warriors so she can send them to Valhalla for the war. If you want some excellent character development, deep, dark and tragic plot, this is a must play. Lenneth is my favorite female protagonist ever. Number 49, the Atelier Arland Trilogy. I'm not gonna fill the list with Atelier games, so I decided to treat them like the trilogies they are. These first three games take place in the same universe, but in different places and with different characters. Some make cameos and some even join your party. All three have only one protagonist, which is obviously a girl. You don't need to play one to understand the other though, but if you care that much about the chronology, try Rorona first. Number 48, Lost Kingdoms. Lost Kingdoms is an exclusive on the GameCube, an action RPG where you play as Princess Katia on a quest to save her kingdom from a horrible curse. To do that, she'll use the power of cards. These let her summon creatures to fight by her side, controlled by the computer. The game's pretty much a linear adventure where you'll fight through different areas, defeating a boss at the end. There's barely any character development here, as it is more story focused, but it's a great game mainly for its interesting battle mechanics. Number 47, Lost Kingdoms 2. You now play as a thief called Tara trying to steal a bunch of powerful runestones. She's sort of like an anti-hero actually, which is pretty cool. The game though is not as good as the first one to be honest. It suffers from some clunky controls and poor camera, but it's still playable and enjoyable, except now you don't get into random battles. You fight the enemies you encounter head on with your knife or with the help of the creatures you summon. Eh, it's an okay game with an okay protagonist. Number 46, Persona 2 Eternal Punishment. So there's two games under the banner Persona 2 on the PS1, but we didn't get the other one until it's PSP remastered. Eternal Punishment puts you in the shoes of a reporter called Maya as she performs investigations on crimes connected to Joker. No, not the guy from Persona 5, another Joker. Except she barely has any memory of what happened on the previous game, Innocent Sin. It is recommended to play Innocent Sin first to fully understand the whole story, although that one has a male protagonist. Both are solid games nonetheless. Number 45, Code of Princess. This game is on the 3DS, PC and the Switch. It's an action RPG that plays like a 2.5D beat-em-up and you can control a wide variety of characters. But the story focuses on Solange, an overly sexualized princess that is exiled from her kingdom after a savage attack is orchestrated by monsters. Why exiled? Because the army blames her for this. Yeah, sounds like a serious plot, but make no mistake, this is a comedy all in all. A very good one, by the way, and with some silly but interesting character development. Number 44, Ghost Lion. Horrendous cover, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty infamous for that. But the game actually follows the quest of Maria, trying to find her missing parents. But when she sets off, she ends up in a fantasy world with all sorts of creatures. It's a turn-based RPG where you play as Maria, but she can summon different beings during battle. It plays very similar to an early Dragon Quest game, but with the difference of using summons, and of course, with a female protagonist. Number 43, Yggdra Union. 
first released on the Game Boy Advance, then enhanced for the PSP, this is a war game. Princess Yggdra's kingdom is suddenly attacked and she has to flee. Upon a chance encounter with some mercenaries, she convinces them to join her to start an uprising in order to reclaim her kingdom. It's a grid-based strategy RPG mainly revolving around the use of cards and a triangle attack system. Now, keep in mind this game is extremely difficult and hard to understand, as it is quite complex with its battle mechanics, but trust me, it's quite good. Number 42, Isuna the Unemployed Ninja Another fun comedy is Isuna on the Nintendo DS. It's a roguelike RPG where your main character Isuna has recently lost her job as a ninja, so she needs to go to the dungeons to gain favor with the townspeople and her teacher in order to get her job back. It has a great sense of humor and Isuna is a very likable character, but as many roguelike games, it gets hotter the more you advance. The game has a direct sequel also on the DS, but I haven't played it. All I know is that Isuna is once again the main character. Number 41, Drakengar 3. It's a PS3 exclusive where you play as Zero in a quest to stop her evil sisters from taking over the world. Sounds dumb, and yes, it's another comedy, but one of the most messed up comedies ever made. It was written and directed by Yoko Taro, who also created the Nier games, so expect a bizarre and very obscure plot with tons of adult jokes, blood and gore. No, you don't need to play the other games to understand this one, as it is actually a prequel to them all. Number 40, Final Fantasy XIII. I don't really like this game, but it's the only main Final Fantasy game so far where the lead character is a woman. It's pretty popular but infamous at the same time, so you're probably acquainted on what's it about. There's two more games in the series and fans seem to favor the second one the most. Like I said, I'm not a fan, but you should play it and decide for yourself if you like it or not. Number 39, Atelier Annie. Yeah, well, most people don't even know this game exists. It was barely advertised and not too many copies exist, so it's rare. It plays more like the old Atelier games we never got, so it's interesting to know that we did get this one. Annie is the youngest alchemist I've seen in the series, and everything feels like a pocket version of any Atelier. This one is pretty good, though. It's short and fast-paced, so it makes for an easy pick with a fun protagonist. Number 38, La Pucelle Tactics. This is a strategy RPG, very similar to this Gaia, except it's highly influenced by the elemental layers around the maps. You gotta turn them and use them to your advantage whenever you can. It's a comedy following the chosen maiden Priere. She needs to train herself to face the dark prince that will bring calamity to the world. But of course, she's a tomboy, slightly chubby and sensitive about um, certain things. I loved her, and I think this game has a very funny cast of characters. Give this one a try if you can. Number 37, Tales of Exilia. Okay, this game has two protagonists and therefore it shouldn't be here. Let me explain why I broke my own rule. I like Jude, but he totally feels like he just kind of got the lead role for no reason. The real protagonist is Mila Maxwell and 90% of the story focuses and revolves around her. Jude got a 10% merely as an excuse for the game to have the option of a male protagonist. Yeah, I always tell people to play with Mila first, and she's an amazing main character with excellent development, including a cool plot twist. Number 36, Mary Skelter 2. The sequel to a first game where the main character was a guy, direct sequel by the way, Otsu is the heroine here and she finds both Jack and Alice, the protagonists of the first game. For whatever reason though, it is recommended to play this game first even though it takes place after the original. Huh. Anyway, didn't play this game much, but it has a female lead. There's a third game recently released, but I haven't played it. Number 35, Magic Knight Ray Earth. It's a game based on an anime series, one pretty popular by the way. The central figure, however, is Hikaru, also known as Lucy. She is sent along her two friends to rescue a princess in order to become true magic knights. It plays from a top-down view perspective with shrunk characters. An action RPG that it's pretty decent but nothing really outstanding. It's exclusive to the Saturn but it's the only game in the series ever released in the West. Number 34, Kudelka. Kudelka was the start of what would later become Shadow Hearts on the PS2. This follows the witch Kudelka in an attempt to explore an abandoned monastery full of dark secrets and dangers. Inside she realizes nothing is what it seems, while teaming up with two other characters. 
The game's a bizarre experiment mixing survival horror elements, including tank controls and random encounters. These don't work very well as battles are too long because your characters move on grids. It's a good game and a very interesting piece of history, but it's just very rough on the edges. Number 33, Fantasy Star. The first game in this series and one of the most influential RPGs of all time, a dungeon crawler in first person with random encounters and turn-based battles. In a super futuristic world, Alice promises her dying brother she'll avenge him and stop the evil Emperor Lassic. It's a pretty basic plot and there's not much character-driven story, but it was very innovative for its time and one of the earliest video games with a female protagonist in history. Number 32, Knights of Azure. Knights of Azure is an action RPG with a vampire knight called Arnis on a quest to investigate the bizarre events occurring on an island. She is accompanied by her friend Lilis, a saint destined to seal the Night Lord's blue blood that's deeply affecting people. But Arnis fights by herself only with the help of several different creatures she'll be able to summon. Great action here, solid gothic atmosphere, but it's heavy on the fan service side. Number 31, Knights of Azure 2. Its sequel came out soon after, but with a new story and characters. Takes place in the same universe though, but now you control Arush. She's also half human, half vampire, thanks to a curse inflicted by the Moon Queen. Arush and her friends must fight to stop her, but not before rescuing a dear friend first. These two games might not look like it, but they are indeed character driven, so they do have an interesting development throughout the story. Number 30, God Wars. A modern strategy RPG I've covered numerous times before. Very influenced by classic Japanese folklore, you will play as Princess Kaguya. She wants to find her missing mother, who seems to be the key in the middle of a war Kaguya and her friends are trying to stop. This game is very easy to get into with simple battle mechanics perfect for beginners. That and Kaguya's story are both good reasons to play it. Number 29, Death and Request. Sheena is a developer of a MMORPG, but one day she realizes she's trapped in there. So with the help of her co-worker in real life, Sheena will have to find both an explanation and a way out. It's a compiled hard RPG, so expect the usual fan service and clumsy shenanigans. Some comedy is there, but it takes itself seriously when it needs to. A sequel was also released, but I've never played it. Number 28, Wild Arms Crossfire. I didn't really want to include this game here, but it stands out for having a female protagonist. Most of the other games have either a guy as the MC or multiple protagonists. Clarissa is merely a drifter looking for the guy who killed her mother, but sooner than later she ends up entangled in a political war. So it's another grid-based tactical RPG, very hard and convoluted, with huge difficulty spikes. It's not bad, but it killed the series for how poorly designed it was. I don't recommend this game, but that shouldn't stop you from playing it and deciding for yourself if it's bad or not. Number 27, A Witch's Tale. The only half-decent game by company Hitmaker, exclusive to the DS. As its title implies, it's the tale of a witch named Lidel trying to find powerful ancient magic to become the best witch ever. What's interesting about this game is that Lidel will travel through places based on classic stories like Alice in Wonderland, The Little Mermaid and The Wizard of Oz. The battles are played in turns where players need to use the stylus to draw runes to attack. Creatures known as dolls can be recruited into your party to aid you. It's alright, just don't expect too much of it. It's a very comedic game, and Lidell herself is funny enough to keep you entertained. Number 26, Near Automata. Well, this game has three different arcs, each with their own protagonist, so I'm breaking my own rule here again, but 2B is the central figure of the game, and most events happen because of her actions. I don't think anyone has a problem recognizing her as a true heroine and main character of this game. Anyways, no need to explain it, it's probably the most popular RPG on the list. Number 25, the Atelier Dusk Trilogy. This trilogy came out after the Arland one, and it's honestly more fleshed out. The first one, Aisha, is the only game with just one protagonist. The second game, Eska and Logi, might not apply here, because it has two main characters and one of them is a guy. But who cares, right? Shelly is by far the best out of the three, also with two protagonists, but both of them are girls. Great games, all three. Start with any of them if you want to. 
Number 24, Sakuna of Rise and Ruin. I haven't played this game, so I probably shouldn't talk about it, but I wanted to include it because it's modern and it also has a female heroine, Sakuna. From what I've seen, it's half a 2D action RPG similar to most beat em ups, and the other half is a farming simulator like in Harvest Moon. That's all I know, so instead, how about you tell me if you think it's any good? Number 23, Phantom Brave. This is on several different platforms nowadays, and it's kinda hard to decide if the main character is the girl or not, but everything revolves around her, Marona, an outcast trying to make a living by accepting small-time jobs. She's also the only one who can summon her allies, the Phantoms, by confining them to most objects on the maps. This game is not friendly for beginners, so I recommend it only to experienced gamers. Number 22, Sorcery Saga. It's on the PS Vita and on PC, a roguelike RPG where randomly generated areas await you for a dungeon crawling. Yep, as Pupuru, you pick up items and level up along the way, but once you exit, you're back to level 1. It's part of an old Japanese franchise and this is the only game in the series localized thus far. And it's one of the dumbest games ever made, but that's actually part of its charm. Number 21, Final Fantasy X-2. I hate this game, but that doesn't mean it's bad, it just means I don't want to talk about it. It's a direct sequel to Final Fantasy X starring Yuna, but you knew that. I only included this game because I know some of you are fans of it, so there you go. Number 20, Crystal Warriors. This is another one of the very first RPGs where the main character was a girl. Princess Iris must defeat the enemy army who stolen three of the four magic crystals needed to maintain balance. It's one of the earliest strategy RPGs ever made, moving on grids with a rock-paper-scissors mechanic. Just a warning though, this game barely has any story or dialogue, it's 90% more about the gameplay, so you won't see any character development here whatsoever. Number 19, Crystar. This one is an action RPG where you control four girls and can switch to any of them at any given time. The story, though, focuses on Rei, a tormented girl by the loss of her sister Mirai. She loses sight of her in the dangerous purgatory, so in order to find her, she makes a pact to gain magical powers and collect souls in exchange for them. This is full girl power, as all characters here are women, except from some of the enemies. Great game, quite dark, definitely among the best in this video. Number 18, Battle Princess of Arcadia. Now for a polar opposite to Crystar in terms of atmosphere. This is colorful, cheesy and very comedic. Plume is the battle princess of her kingdom and some strange things have been happening with the monsters, so she's off to investigate to put a stop to a possible war. Don't take the story seriously, it's a nonsensical comedy but it's quite funny. Plume is such a lovable airhead though. But anyway, the action is excellent here with three different battle modes, all of them in beautiful 2D graphics. Number 17, Jean Dark. Amazing strategy RPG based on the folklore heroine Joan of Arc, but with a touch of fantasy. And yes, it's got strong character development. Jean is a phenomenal heroine with a story with great writing. It's very welcoming for beginners as well, but it does get pretty challenging later on. Deep, dark, tragic, emotional, this is a must play and another one of the best games in this video. Number 16, Rhapsody, a musical adventure. Released on the PS1 as a very simple and easy strategy RPG, later ported to the DS but now as a turn-based RPG. Barely anything else changed though, I've played both versions and it's the same lovely adventure, so if you have access to both, pick the one with the battle system that appeals to you the most. Silly, charming story about a humble girl dreaming to marry a handsome prince until that dream comes… kinda true. Number 15, Wild Arms 3. In reality, this third entry is no different than its two predecessors, they all have multiple main characters, but this one has a strong focus on Virginia Maxwell, a young drifter in search of her missing father, while following his footsteps to become an adventurer. I just love her, and the plot usually comes back to her over and over. Hell, the game was even advertised as if she was the one and only main character here, so there. Number 14, The Atelier Mysterious Trilogy. Three more Atelier games, that's right. Sophie, Furious, and one with two lowlies called Lydia and Swell. I haven't played that one. 
Speedy's got a bad reputation for being very slow and performing poorly on the Vita, stick to the newer versions, it's a good game, don't worry about it. Sophie is the star in this list as I thought it was quite similar to Rorona in terms of charm. All three games with girls as main characters though, so pick whichever you want and off you go. Number 13, Tales of Berseria. Oof, another one of the best in this video by far. One of my favorite Tales games, following a bloody quest for revenge led by Velvet Crow in search for her teacher who mercilessly sacrificed her little brother. One of the darkest in the series, if not the darkest of them all. This is another must play, with excellent combat, music, graphics, story, and an amazing female main character, of course. Number 12, Gudumin, a monstrous adventure. This is an action RPG for kids developed by Falcom, but it's surprisingly fun. Released on PSP, PC, and 3DS. So Perrin moves to a small town to temporarily live with her grandmother. Another small town though exists inside of it, the Monster Town. They recruit Parin to help them fight off the phantoms, creatures attacking the monster world. Parin attacks with the drill but can also hack and slash her way through phantoms, platforms, puzzles and even bosses. Check this game out if you can, it's a nice hidden gem. Number 11, Crimson Tears. Three androids have been left in the shadows when their creators suddenly disappear, so they must find what's going on. Amber, the protagonist, leads the party into randomly generated dungeons to fight in the interdimensional enemies and their bosses. You can control any of the three characters and they're all just as important for the story, but you can only take one to the dungeons. There's also an attempt to rebuild a ruined part of the city if you want to. This is a fun game, a bit repetitive but still great. Number 10, Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. Usually, Fire Emblem games have two protagonists. In some, like the Blazing Sword, the guy ends up taking over the story. Others, like Echoes, make you play with both simultaneously. And others, let you select the gender of the protagonist. In Radiant Dawn, however, direct sequel to Path of Radiance on the GameCube, Mikaya is the main character. Sure, Ike eventually appears to take over, but the focus often switches back to her, especially near the end, so this excellent sequel doesn't really clarify if she's 100% the main heroine, but let's just say it's like in Nier Automata and I'm sure you'll get the idea. Number 9, Popful Male. This is a cross genre, an action RPG, a metroidvania and a platformer. Our heroine's name is Popful Male, yeah, same as the game's title, strangely. She's a bounty hunter, merely in search for a wizard. There's a 2 million gold reward for that, so it's a no-brainer for her. Two more characters join her later in the game and you can also play as them if you want to. Do yourself a favor and play the fan-translated Japanese version of this game, because the original by working the signs is impossibly hard. Number 8, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torna. It's a prequel to the original Xenoblade 2, but with a female main character. Her name is Laura, and she travels around trying to find her mother. Eventually, other characters join her, and she ends up involved in a plot to stop a war. It does connect deeply to its sequel, and it's very worth playing if you care about the story. This one, in my opinion, had a better battle system, improved from the original. And I choose like Laura 10 times over Rex. Number 7, Persona 3, The Answer. What? This game can't be here just because it's an epilogue? It's a damn long ass epilogue, so I think of it as its own game. But you do need to play the original first, as this is a direct sequel to it, full of major spoilers. The answer's protagonist is Aegis, the female android we fell in love with in the first game. It plays exactly the same, but without the high school simulation. If you're a fan of Persona 3 and Aegis, you need to play this one. Number 6, Parasite Eve. Unlike Kudelka, this was a great mix between survival horror and role-playing. You play as Aya Bree, a police officer deeply connected to Eve, a monstrous being capable of altering the mitochondria and human cells. Superb writing here, excellent story and great character development. One of the best JRPGs in this list. It also has two sequels, but they don't feel like RPGs at all anymore. Number 5, Black Rock Shooter. Based on an anime series, this PSP exclusive is quite unique. 
It has what feels like a turn-based system where you shoot at your enemies until their turn comes up. You'll need to guard or evade when that happens. It's a post-apocalyptic setting where no one seems to be alive except a group of soldiers, and your protagonist, the mysterious girl with a dark past who's supposed to be a lethal weapon, humanity's last hope for survival. Number 4. Atelier Risa so there's two games so far, but I've only played the first one. Both, however, have the same characters and, of course, the female protagonist, Risa. She's a sexy tomboy who wants to be an adventurer, so in order to do that, she becomes an alchemist. While not among my favorites in the series, Risa certainly is one of the best. Ircha talked very fondly of its sequel to in the Atelier video we did, so I imagine it's just as good. I'll leave that video at the end so you can go and watch it. Number 3. The Sino Saga Trilogy Three games that look and play differently, but they're all the same story and cast of characters. All turn-based RPGs as well. The main character is Shion Uzuki, a young researcher carrying out the android research of a lethal weapon called Cosmos. Together, they'll face several intergalactic ploys, sinister philosophical ordeals, and yeah, I'm making it sound very cheesy, but trust me, these three games are incredibly well-written and the gameplay is top-notch. I'm also a big fan of both Xion and Cosmos, and to see them growing throughout three long episodes, well, just imagine the character development here. Number 2. Trails in the Sky So there's three games here, but the third one is kind of its own game with a male protagonist. The first two are pretty much one game cut into two volumes as they play and look exactly the same, merely continuing the same story. Estelle Bright, our beloved heroine, wants to be a bracer, which is pretty much like a legal vigilante in this universe, so with the help of her adopted brother, who also wants to become a bracer, they'll go on to different adventures and eventually a sinister plot involving a terrible war. Yeah, this game is another must-play and Estelle is one of my favorite girls in gaming. Number 1. Valkyrie Profile 2 this video started with the first game, let's close it with the second one. It's not a coincidence that it's my favorite PS2 RPG of all time, I put it here on purpose. It's both a prequel and a sequel to the original, but now you play as Alicia, a secluded princess whose existence has been denied even by the king, her father. Because the Valkyrie Silmeria's soul inhabits her body, they both escape their exiled lives to recover Silmeria's body and, well, the rest is a spoiler. Masterpiece this one, but it's kinda hard to get into as the battle system is somewhat complex, but definitely worth the trouble. Finally, I wanna mention that there's a lot of indie RPGs with a female protagonist. Some of them are quite popular, actually. Be sure to give some of them a chance. Yeah, yeah, the Neptunia games. Ugh. Yeah. Anyway, there are even more JRPGs with a female protagonist other than the Neptunia games and this piece of garbage, but I'm pretty sure the comment section will take care of that, so be sure to give it a read. That's all for today, guys. If you're interested in my books, link to them in the description below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends, especially your lady feminist friends. Yeah. See you next time!